Sn That's drunk. One of my favorite videos to work on are these good games in unexpected places videos because it gives me an excuse to go looking for stuff that I wouldn't go near otherwise. Like in the past I found a good Wario Land game on Virtual Boy, a pretty good port of Marathon on the Apple Pippin of all things, and interesting games like Laser Lords on the CDI. I've also used these videos as an excuse to find surprisingly advanced and polished games like the Lucky Dime Caper starring Donald Duck on the Sega Master System, as well as a great port of Pirates on NES. And there's also downright bizarre stuff like Captain Blood on the Atari ST. Man, I love that game. So let's continue along that path with an arcade laserdisc game called Firefox. Yes, that's right, before it was an internet browser, it was a majorly ambitious arcade game made by Atari back in 1983, based on the film of the same name. Now, when most people think of arcade cabinets that utilize laserdiscs, they'll think of stuff like Dragon's Lair, otherwise known as the game that featured the artwork of former Disney animator Don Bluth. Firefox takes a bit of a different approach, using backgrounds captured on film with the graphical overlay that features all of the gameplay. The effect is still pretty dang cool to this day, and I can't imagine what this would have seemed like to witness back when it came out. I should warn you, it could be kind of tricky to get this game to work properly on MAME or FB Alpha, but if you dig Afterburner-style games like this, it's still pretty good, and something a tad different. Let's go over some handheld games that not many people may know about, starting with the Neo Geo Pocket, which actually got a Sonic game titled Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure. What stands out immediately about this game is the performance. It really does feel like a classic Sonic game, with the kind of level design that makes you rely on memorization and Twitch controls. Granted, this game does have its drawbacks, like for instance, when you take damage, only a few rings come out of you, no matter how many you've accumulated, so you can very easily go from 70-something rings to just two or three in the blink of an eye. Even so, this game is fantastic, and it even has the over-the-shoulder bonus stages. I feel like the Neo Geo Pocket isn't talked about enough in general, especially games like Sonic Pocket Adventure. Sticking with Sega, the Game Gear also has a few games outside of the usual stuff that are still worth your time today. Sylvan Tale is a game that was only released in Japan, but it's a top-down Zelda-style adventure game that's held up extremely well. The graphics here are sharp and distinct, the music is great, the enemy design is clever, the boss fights are fun, and the puzzles are interesting. Unfortunately, since this one was made in 1995, which is pretty late in the Game Gear's lifespan, it was never localized in the US. However, Aeon Genesis made an English patch for this one so you can follow the story, but yeah, if you dig games like this, then Sylvan Tale is absolutely worth checking out any way you can. One other Game Gear game I want to point out is Fatal Fury Special, and this one was made available outside of Japan, and holy crap, the sprite animation and the scrolling backgrounds here are really impressive. And even more surprisingly is that this game plays perfectly fine as a fighting game despite having just two attack buttons. There's nine characters here, and all their moves are just as they are in the Neo Geo version, and everything works very smoothly. If you're into collecting Game Gear stuff, or just handheld stuff in general, then you gotta pick this one up, if nothing else than to get some real use out of the Game Gear D-pad, easily one one of the most underappreciated and underutilized D-pads in gaming in general. Alright, let's check out something really interesting on the good old Game Boy. It's James Bond 007, and it's a top-down RPG. Yep, that's right, this one plays like if Link's Awakening had a leveling system and starred Sean Connery. And yeah, I mean the Connery version of Bond because this game is a bit of a throwback to those days, playing up the humor with a bit of a tongue-in-cheek vibe with both the story and the dialogue. Maybe I've been living under a rock, but I was stunned at how good this game is. I guess I shouldn't be though because the original Game Boy has always been full of surprises. James Bond 007 was released in early 1998, nearly nine years after the Game Boy's launch, and folks were still making high-quality games for it. Definitely check this one out. It's surprisingly in-depth and a lot of fun. Moving on to the Game Boy Advance, here's Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. This one's a 2.5D side-scroller with two story modes, where you can play as either Anakin or Obi-Wan, and as you can see, the art style here has a bit of a cel-shaded thing going on, making it kinda sorta look how the Clone Wars animated series ended up looking, which is pretty cool. This is a really well-made action platformer with some great sprite work and some fun mechanics to play with, like force abilities that can be upgraded. Although, if you play as Anakin, one force ability you start with is called Vader's Wrath. Gee, I wonder how the story will end in this one. Anyway, this is another game that kinda snuck up on me. And even if you're not into Star Wars, this game is good enough to be worth your time. 
Wouldn't be a proper video of this nature if I didn't talk about something on the Sega Master System, and here we are again with Spellcaster. This is an interesting one not just because of the gameplay, but because the story has an interesting way of being told. There's a lot of pixel art here, and instead of coming across as a cheese fest, it's actually a pretty interesting story involving medieval Japan and the underworld and all that good stuff. Yeah, it's certainly not the only game about that, but hey, the Master System is a big blind spot for me, so when I find stuff like this for other people, I gotta tell them about it, and this is a pretty good game. Finally, here's something that's been around for a while, but, you know, I'm about 30 years behind on games, and I don't keep up with stuff, so forgive me if I haven't heard of this weird-ass Halo homebrew that someone made for Atari 2600, of all things. And yeah, this is pretty dang cool. It's actually made on a 2600 cartridge and everything. You just run around and shoot stuff, get hit, and you start at the beginning. Pretty dang simple. The map is laid out in a similar way to a game like Adventure, and that stuff runs together, which is pretty cool. There's no actual requirement to shoot stuff. You just gotta survive, find keys, and unlock areas. There's 64 screens in total, and hey, sometimes simple is better, and I can dig that. Alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.